What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So the development studio behind the highly anticipated zombie MMO survival game, Fantastic, uh, or Fantastic because there's no A in their name. Um, so it's Fantastic, but who cares how the hell y'all want to pronounce y'all name? Y'all are dead. Y'all don't even exist anymore. So I can call y'all whatever the hell I want. At this point, I could just call y'all fuck niggas. That, that's what the FN could stand for. Um, but just four days after they released the day before on Steam PC, they have announced that they are closing their studio due to the game being a financial failure. Just four days after this now, usually I, I wait for like all the bullet point artists and the engagement merchants on Twitter to kind of like put to the bullet points together and the cliff notes versions together for this story but i found this so entertaining i just like just kind of put the timeline together myself and we're gonna go through that because this is just funny this is this is insane and a lot of people just already assume this this game was a scam before uh some people are definitely calling it a, a scam now that this was just a money money laundering scheme and look the first time i saw this trailer I knew I felt like it was too good to be true. Some no name studio um, that, that that I've never heard of that really hasn't done much just releases this trailer that looks extremely impressive is making this this huge zombie survival MMO. It looks good. It, it, it and th this this honestly and when you look at the the first trailer compared to the gameplay and what people have been playing just since Friday. This is this is beyond like Ubisoft watchdogs level. Oh, it's, it surpasses that. It's way more egregious than that. So. So here's how it happened. Right. So 2021, we got the first trailer for the day before. It looks very impressive. It looks so impressive. It skyrockets to the most wish list wish listed game on Steam. And, you know, Steam and PC guys, they can be particular. You know, they don't. I would say they don't necessarily get, they're, they're very picky, I'll say that. But even they were kind of fooled by, by this trailer, right? Um, they wanted to keep an eye on it, though. I'm not going to say everybody was convinced. I, like I said, I always felt like, oh, it's too good to be true. That's how I always am with a lot of games. I'm like, uh, I don't know, this game looks too good. I don't know if that's going to be real. I don't know if this is actually going to make it to the game. This could be vaporware. Uh, you know, they could just be using this as, as mark as a marketing tool to get more developers it could be a lot of things but i initially don't always believe depending on who it's coming from that the game is going to look like that so that's the first thing so that was 2021 uh january 2021 you know a little bit more than two years ago then the game is delayed from june 2022 because that's when it was the first first uh supposed to come out right and the reason was they were switching. The reason that they claim was that they were switching from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. Then it was delayed. The, the new release date was March 1st. It was delayed from March 1st because of trademark issues. Once again, what they claim. And then at, at that point, they promised there would be no more delays. So after that, it was delayed to November. So that was March. The last release date, uh, re release date was March 1st, 2023, right? So it was delayed due to trademark issues. Then the new release date was November 10th. After, so after they promised no more delays, they delayed it. They delayed the November 10th release date just a week before. Just a week before. So the new date was December. 7th which was just four days ago so by the way in june of 2023 this year it was discovered that part of the development team at fantastic consisted of unpaid workers that they were calling volunteers very strange very odd also in november they st they stated that the console versions would launch with the full 1.0 version of when whenever they get to the 1.0 uh, full release version on, you know, it would release alongside the PC version because the game released in early access 
four days ago. So whenever they get to 1.0 and, 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 and leave early access, that's when the console versions would come out also. So on December 4th, they released this very strange post on Twitter addressing, you know, skeptics and, and addressing people that claimed that they were scamming people, that their game was a scam, telling them, hey, please don't accuse us as, of, of, of us of being scammers. Our game is not a scam. We've been working on this game very hard for five years, yada, yada, yada. Very strange post. Just a very weird in the way it's written, the way they addressed it. Very strange behavior. By the way, in between all of this time from the first trailer to before, right before it was released, they released multiple trailers, and each time the game looked worse and worse than the first trailer. Didn't look better. It just continually looked worse than what they initially showed. Like, like the first trailer, trailer, the visual fidelity was like was great. Um, it was it kind of reminded reminded me of what we saw in Division. Just the attention to detail, you know, that first Division trailer and all that stuff kind of reminded me of that. So the game finally releases the early, in early access on December 7th, four days ago, right? And everybody's shitting on the game. It's buggy. It's glitchy. This game is a mess. Just all bad, mostly bad reviews, right? In, in four days, the game's player count, I don't know what it initially was, but it dropped by 90%. So by today, the player count of the day before had dropped, to, dropped by 90%. And the Steam reviews had, are mostly negative. It has about uh, 20,000 reviews, most of them being negative and citing that the game is buggy, broken, and a glitchy mess. And also, as of today, as I said, they announced the closure of, uh, of Fantastic due to the day before being a financial failure, and they lack the funds to continue development. There will be no more patches, and all income received is being used to pay off the debts to their partners. Can't make this up. Cannot make this up. Very, very strange behavior, bro. This, this honestly does look like a money laundering scheme. Like this, this seems. This honestly seems to be a way, and it's funny because I said something like this before, you know, because we always hear stories about like, you know, illegal organizations, you know, the cartel and whoever uh, using money laundering schemes like car washes or laundromats and all that stuff. I'm like, why have they never like used like a game development studio for a money laundering scheme? I, that's kind of, well, at least not, not, it hasn't happened to our knowledge. Maybe there has been cases of that, but I've, I've. I've actually thought that's a great idea because what if you use what if one of these orga illegal organizations use game, a game development studio as a money laundering, um, uh, a money laundering scheme, a way to wash their money. But we also get a good game out of it. That would be fire. That would I'm just saying that would be fire. Not the illegal part. But if the whoever, whatever studio they're using to wash their money actually also gave us a good game, I wouldn't be mad at that. But in this case. Yeah, it's it's some trash. It's it's absolute garbage. Yeah, it's it's insane. This this I don't I, I can't recall necessarily a, a story that went exactly like this. If you go to their website right now, it doesn't exist already. That just that quick. I I don't think I've ever seen that. If you go to their website right now, all you'll see is the exact same thing that they posted on Twitter. Right, the exact same post. So it's like, bro, it, it feels like y'all had this closure planned well in advance. Like, bro, we're going we're gonna to get as much money as we can. We're going to launch the game, get as much money as we can, shut the whole thing down, get out of here. That's what it looked like because who, who, okay, when you come to the realization, okay, this game's a, can, can you even come to the realization that, oh, this game is a financial failure, it's done, there's, there's no saving this that quick? Just that fast, uh, done, quick, shut the website down, we're out of here. Does, does, it, does it work like that? Maybe because they're like, I guess, this smaller development team and there's not that many moving parts with, their, with, with them as a team and their publisher, which I'm going to get into. I don't know. 
But it looks suspicious and it looks spooky that they just hauled ass and got out of there and shut everything down that quickly. So if we look at their, uh, their actual statement, right? Today, we announced the closure of Fantastic Studio. Unfortunately, the day before has financially failed and we lack the funds to continue. All income received is, is being used to pay off our debts to our partners. Kind of sounds like, like, like they owed some, somebody that, that, that got a lot of power um, and you, they owed them a lot of money and they had to come up with a scheme or they were going to get whacked. All right, they, they were going to get taken out. Um, I can imagine this, this, this sounds like a, sounds like a fire Netflix show, by the way. Um, they said we invested all our efforts, resources, and man hours into development of the day before, which was our first huge game. We really wanted to release new patches <laughs> saying we really wanted to release new patch. Like, yeah, it's an early access game. New patches were going to come. That's you, you can technically say that and then not sound crazy for an early access game, but it still, still sounds wild. Um, We wanted to release new patches uh, to reveal the full potential of the game. But unfortunately, we don't have the funding to continue the work. It's important to note that we didn't take any money from the public during the development of the day before. There were no pre-orders or crowdfunding campaigns. We worked tirelessly for five years, pouring our blood, sweat and tears into the game. It is true they didn't take pre-orders. There was no crowdfunding. But. They still have the money from whatever they got from Steam, correct? Like, I, I know a lot of people are probably got refunds, but they still got some money out of this, right? I, I would imagine. And, and not on the back end, can't you write some of this off or something like that? I don't know the intricate details, but I don't know if it's as plain as, as they're making it. At the moment, the future of the day before. And prop night is unknown. I don't know what the hell prop night is, Uh, but the servers will remain operational. We apologize if if we apologize if we didn't meet your expectations. If Uh, we did everything within our power, unfortunately, we we miscalculated our capabilities. Creating games is an incredibly challenging endeavor. We're grateful uh, to everyone who supported us during these difficult years. It's been a fantastic journey over the past eight years, and they listed. A timeline, 2015 opening the studio, 2017 release of Wild 8, 2018 release of Dead Dozen, uh, also 2018 release of Radiant 1, uh, 2021 release of Prop Night. Okay, that's another game they worked on. And then 2023 release of Day Before. So let me just entertain the idea that they were actually a legit development studio. They then, in that case, they got way in over their heads. They got way too ambitious. And, And I think this is... This is something that applies to every level of game development from some new indie studio to AAA. One thing that can lead to the disaster of any game studio is too much ambition. Not knowing how to limit the scope of your video game. I always say that. This is why I be saying sometimes innovation and ambition can lead to disaster. Sometimes it's overrated. Not everybody is meant to be innovated. Not, not everybody should be ambitious. If you don't got the means, the resources, the manpower, the time to, to, be, to be the best game and you know, have all the best things included in your game, bro, it's okay. Sometimes it's okay to do less. Sometimes less is more. That, that, I say that all the time. Sometimes I don't, need, I don't need a game to do the most things and have all these things included. Sometimes it's okay for the first time to just release a decent game. And then hopefully you're able to build on top of that game and then, you know, have a follow-up. Sometimes that's, that's the best path. You don't got to be the best the first time out and do, and do the most the first time out. And this is just me entertaining that they could be a legit gaming studio. But I don't know if that's true. Now, as far as the, the publisher, the publisher is, was Mytona. Um, so it says, uh, when you go to their website, Mytona is a global group of companies specializing in video game development and publishing. Mytona is an international team headquartered in New Zealand, uh, uniting industry professionals from all over the world in 2012. Oh, since 2012, excuse me. And the games that they've published, 
they still got day before on this list. <clears throat> the days, the games that they've published are Seeker, Seeker Notes, Hidden Objects, Cooking Diary, Restaurant Game, Outfire, uh, The Day Before, Prop Night, and Tasty Makeover. Nothing of real note here. <sighs> Very odd set of events here. Um, I, I, I had a good laugh. It was funny. Uh, you know, at first people would be like, oh man, you shouldn't laugh at a studio closure. I, I thought there would be a lot of people like that. I haven't seen that, but I think a lot of people understand and kind of acknowledge like, bro, this game was, was, uh, at the, at the very least scamish in, in appearance. And, you know, they, it, it seems like it could have been a grift. It seems like it always could have been vaporware. Um, it, it, cause it did seem very like Daisy ish. That's kind of, it's. You know, like at least based on that first trailer, it seemed like high quality Daisy. Um, but I don't know, man. I I don't, I don't know. Y'all gotta y'all let me know what y'all think about this. At the very least, it was entertaining. I, I gotta say that I would have. The game did look very good. The the first trailer, right? Wouldn't it be great for somebody to actually make what these what was actually pro proposed in that first trailer, I think that would be great. That would be a great idea if somebody could actually make that a real thing. But um, it's just another lesson. If it's too good to be true, it, it probably is, especially from some no-name developer that have and some in some situ in some situations, you know, it, it, it can be it, it, it can work out very well. Uh, because the developers of my game of the year, um, Lies of P, uh, they really haven't made anything super impressive before, before this, uh, Neo is games and well, was Neo is games, the publisher or the, I keep forgetting, uh, forgetting whether they were the publisher or the developer, but I, th I think, yeah, Neo is games were the, um, no, Neo is the publisher round date studio i think is the developer and they didn't really make anything like super impressive uh prior to this they, they made some legit games but nothing on the nothing on the um the level of lies of p so sometimes it, it it can work out if you have some actual i but you know i think all the red flags and the warning signs were there like volunteer them cl uh, claiming that you know they had volunteers and uh, working at the studio and um, vol yeah, volunteers working at the studio and just those really strange uh, notes that they were, uh, you know, putting out and the game being delayed like, you know, three, four times it, claiming that it was trademark and stuff. And anytime you see stuff like, oh, we had a trademark issue, a lot of the times that, that'd be a developer that don't know what they're doing. Um, not dotting their T's, excuse me, not dotting their I's and crossing their T's. Um, yeah. Let me know what y'all think, man. Uh, follow me on Twitter, hit the like button, notification bell, hit that, all that good stuff. Catch y'all on the next video. I'm out. Peace.